morning, church. Welcome to service. It is so wonderful to be found in the presence of the Lord. And I want to thank you for giving the first fruits of your Sunday morning to the Lord, worshipping Him and fellowshipping with us. If it is your first time with us, we want to welcome you too. And we hope you have a wonderful time of fellowshipping and worshipping the Lord. You know, our on-site services take place at 11 a.m. at our Upper East Coast uh, campus. And, you know, do remember to book your tickets for the, for the next service. Our ticketing system uh, opens uh, every Wednesday from 12 noon. You know, uh, we kicked off a series on transformative worship. And last week, we learned about lamentations. A, a lament being a prayer that we utter in search of peace and understanding amidst painful circumstances and suffering. You know, beyond that, it is a prayer, an interactive engagement with the Lord our God. And uh, today we're going to spend a lot more time just praising and worshipping Him and soaking in his very presence. But before we do that, you know, we're going to uh, prepare our hearts, right, to do that because we want to position ourselves, posture ourselves to welcome and to receive the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. You know, we're going to roll the church news to keep us up to date with some events that are coming on before we go on to praise and worship. And we are 13 days away from our Christmas services, two on Christmas Day, 25th of December, and one on 27th of December. You know, at these services, we will bring to you an original film produced in-house by ourselves. It's entitled, By Your Name. You know, based on Isaiah 9 verse 6, you know, it says, For unto us a child is born. A son is given unto us, and the government shall be shall be shall rest upon his shoulder, and his name shall be Wonderful Counselor, Almighty God, Father of Eternity, Prince of Peace. And you know, to many of us or all of us, he's far more than that. And this wonderful God knows us by our name. You know, just a few days ago, I watched the first cut or the first preview of the film. And you know, I was not only moved, but I came back to the, the heart of worship, to the realization and the awareness of this amazing God who came and gave up his life for us in order that we shall have an eternal, a victorious and an abundant life. So do invite friends. Do invite friends. You know, the ticketing system opens up today and cannot do it. Rush to it. Invite friends and get tickets for the services. And if you're ready, let's roll the church news. Hey church, welcome home. Here at Emmanuel, we believe that church is more than just a Sunday service. We are family and you have a place here. My name is Scott and this is Church News. The government has announced that on the 1st of January 2021, the Trace Together app and tokens are mandatory for entry and exit on all premises around Singapore. This will mean that your safe entry QR codes, your NRIC barcodes, as well as the SingPass mobile app will no longer apply. Our church plans to switch to the Trace Together app and tokens on the 27th of December, but our staff will be on site to help you have a head start on this on the 20th of December onwards. Here is a step-by-step -step video on what you should do. To better protect ourselves and our loved ones against COVID-19, we must start using Trace Together for safe entry check-ins. There are two ways to do this. Option 1. Download the Trace Together app on your mobile phone from the App Store or Google Play Store. Choose your preferred language. Follow the instructions to set up your profile. Once download is completed, remember to turn on Bluetooth and keep the app open in the background. To perform safe entry check-in at the venue, open the app and tap Scan QR. Then scan the QR code and you are done. Option 2. To collect the Trace Together token, check the Token Go Where website for your designated collection venue and start date. 
You can collect your token once distribution starts in your constituency. You'd need to bring along your identity cards when you're collecting the token for yourself or your family members. Remember to bring your token with you whenever you go out. To check in, show the QR code on your token to the staff on site for scanning. If you have the app, you don't need to get a token. Check that you have updated your app to the latest version. You should see the safe entry features on the home screen. Trace Together identifies close contacts and safe entry helps to identify clusters. Let's play our part in community contact tracing to combat COVID-19. Early in the morning, Lulan called me with the phone and told me, come, come, happen something marvelous. And I think, marvelous, in this condition, what can be marvelous? When I go to the prison, this is what I saw. All these faces, and not only it is impossible, I'm thinking that how can this dry bone be alive? I was just watching it go down. And because it was on a high floor, so I was just like staring at it for, for like a really long time. And then I was like, no, like, I'm not going to go home. I can't go home. Ticket registrations are finally open. If you would like to reserve your spot for Emmanuel's original film, By Your Name, you can do so quickly at this link. This year, we're proud to announce that our beneficiary is the new Caris Mission, so let's take a quick peek at who they are. Hi, Pastor Mark and the pastors of uh, Emmanuel Assembly of God. Thank you so much for giving to the Lord. Since 2006, we have been helping the troubled youth, the elderly, and even the prisoners in the prison. We run a nine-month residential program and we see many lives have been transformed. Not only the individual life have been transformed, but the individual have been a blessing to the ministry. We also see many, many of the family members came to know God. During COVID-19, we have not stopped, but in fact, we have expanded our ministry right now, even go beyond. We are being awarded by the Ministry of Home Affairs to do a program for the RTC, the young offenders in the prison. Thank you for partnering with us. Through your giving, we can do even more. And so during this uh, Christmas season, I bless all of you and I pray that God will continue to give you the anointing that you will be a blessing to many, many people in your community. Thank you so much and God bless all of you. Christmas is coming. More than the gifts and festivities, there is this reason for the season. As we look back at 2020, there is much that we can celebrate and be thankful for. Join Golden Emmanuel Ministry for their Christmas service and celebration as we hear a timely message from Emeritus Pastor Alfred Ang on the love of God and how we as his children can live out his love in our relationships with others as we reflect upon this time and season. The Zoom session will be happening on the 19th of December from 2.30 to 4.30 p.m. To register, you can do so via the link shown on the screen or by scanning the QR code. Remember, registration closes on the 17th of December. With so much happening here at Emmanuel, you can keep up with us via our e-bulletin found on our church website at www.emmanuel.org.sg or follow us on our social media platforms for event updates and more. That's all we have for you. Have a great service. Good morning, church! So good to have you with us this morning. Come and join us as we praise and worship Him today.
Hi Church, great to be back. You know, uh, last week, Rachel shared a powerful message on transformational worship. And this particular week, we are closing off with the final session on this. You know, I, I love this topic because I, I feel that worship is so much a part of our Christian walk. And when we get this right, our walk with God will take on to a higher dimension. You know, last week, Rachel shared about, you know, it is perfectly okay to lament but let's not just stop there, but let's go on after lamenting to look to God and to praise and to worship Him. You know, I, I like what she said. She said, God can take us from a place of pain and uncertainty to a place of purpose and direction. So this week, we had a bit of a longer time of worship because we want to put into practice what we are learning. Let me read to you Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 to 8 again. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on the throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. I want to emphasize this, I saw the Lord. The prophet Isaiah saw the Lord. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, with two they were flying, and they were calling out to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and the thresholds shook and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined for, I'm a man, for I am a man of unclean lips and I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with the live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it, he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips, your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. You know, today I want to just really focus on this area. We read from this very account that Isaiah saw the Lord. You know, I, I believe that it wasn't just a vision that dropped out of nowhere. Isaiah was just doing his business. But I believe that Isaiah was somebody in the midst of the trouble that Israel was facing, that he was looking out for the Lord. And I think that itself is a lesson for us. How are we in our walk with God? Do we look out for Him? And especially when we begin to look at the area of transformational worship, what is our worship life with God like? You know, how, what, what, what is it like? And then, and when, do we long to see Him? Do we long to be in His presence? Do we long to have His presence with us? Because I believe that when we choose to seek Him with all our heart, our soul, our mind, our, our mind and our strength, I believe that God will show Himself 
and you will bring us to a place where our faith is realized and we'll grow into Him. You know, I love corporate worship. You know, that's the time that, you know, besides the Word of God, I think corporate worship is so important. And that's one reason why I, I strongly encourage people to come early, early for God. Because the whole segment of the worship, every bit is towards our God. But for corporate worship, that's the moment I find my heart connected with God. The songs that we sing, the time of worship, all that, something happens to me and I'm brought to be aware of God. And I think this is so important. You know, I, I, I learned that the words of the song that we sing, you know, I, I've learned never to take it for granted. You know, there were uh, years ago when I joined the worship, I, I had a chance to attend the Mandarin worship. I began to look at the words because I didn't know the song and I had to like, okay, what does this mean? And I realized that the words that I was not so used to and I began to understand what he was saying, I found it to be so meaningful. And that moment taught me that even in the songs that we are so used to, every line that we sing, we ought to pay attention to it. Let me share with you two songs that, that I, I like very much. You know, one, the first song is this song called The Heart of Worship. Some of you will know that this is one of my favourite. It says this, when the music fades, all is stripped away, and I simply come longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart. It isn't about whether the songs, I, I, I like the songs, I don't like the song. When all that is stripped away, the whole purpose of worship is to bless our Lord. The song goes on, it says, I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within, through the way things appear, you're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you, all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing. I've made it when it's all about you, all about you, Jesus. When I sing this song, I bring myself back to the core of what worship is all about. The worship team may be singing out of tune, it doesn't matter. It may be a song that you're not familiar with, but when you begin to have your heart towards God and you're there to bless God. That's all that matters. So this, this song helps me to bring me back to the heart of real worship. The second song is this song that I love, I love very much because it, it helps to build our faith. It's called Raise a Hallelujah. Many of you will be familiar with this. It says, I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah, my weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah, heaven comes to fight for me. I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're going to hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the king is alive. I raise a hallelujah with everything inside of me. I raise a hallelujah, I will watch the darkness flee. I raise a hallelujah in the middle of the mystery. I raise a hallelujah, fear you lost your hold on me. When I sing a song like this, I, 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 I sense my faith just rising up. Every sickness, everything that we are facing, I'm not afraid. Because this song teaches me to raise a hallelujah in the midst of all that. So when we have a chance to sing a song like this, let our faith be built up. Don't let it be your favourite song, but let it be a song that you mean with all your heart. Something happens when God's people praise and worship God with all their hearts. I know that God is honoured, but more than that, I believe that when we honour Him, God comes into our presence. He is here with us. And when we honour Him, when we raise Him up, the Bible tells us when Jesus is raised up, He will draw all men unto Him. Do you believe that? I always remember this when we had our uh, youth camp in St. John's Island. And that was the year 2001 in December. We were, we were not, we didn't have a, even an aircon place. But when the youth were worshipping God, I remember a Japanese uh, uh, a tourist. He heard the sound from the St. John's jetty and he was drawn to what is this singing that is happening on this remote island? 
and he came and he picked, picked in to take a look at what was happening. You know, and that taught me that the way we respond to God, the way we worship God can draw believers as well as unbelievers or pre-believers to the presence of God, to see God for who He is. You know, I believe that all of us long for the tangible presence of God because we know that when God is tangibly present with us, things happen, miracles happen, you know, lives will be impacted. And I, I, I wish so much that this can happen and I'm longing for the day that I will literally see the presence of God. Has it happened? Well, the Bible tells us. Well, there are two possible scenarios that I'm going to share with you today. Okay, the first scenario is what I call where God reveals Himself. You know, God reveals Himself. Isaiah 6 is a classic example. Isaiah was brought to a vision whereby he saw God and there God was. And all he could do was to worship God. And I think when God's tangible presence is with us, this is what we, we will automatically do. In Exodus 33, verse 8 to 10, this was the nation of Israel in the wilderness. And what Moses had, had done was he had built a tabernacle, they call it the tent of meeting. And he will go out to the tent of meeting. And let's read Exodus 33 from verse 8. It says this, So it was whenever Moses went out to the tabernacle that all the people rose and each man stood at his tent door and watched. Moses, he watched Moses until he had gone into the tabernacle. And it came to pass when Moses entered the tabernacle that the pillar of, cr- of cloud descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle and the Lord talked with Moses. All the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the tabernacle door and all the people rose and worshipped each man in his tent door. I've been reading this, I've been reading Exodus, I'm down to Leviticus in my own quiet time. And when I read this, I saw how people respond to the presence of God, to the tangible presence of God. So that's easy when God appears in a particular way. But there's a second scenario whereby I call God responds to His people. And I think this is the part, this is the part where we can begin to play a very important part. You know, in 2 Chronicles chapter 5, verse 13 to 14, I think we've read this a couple of times this few years. And it was about the dedication of the temple. And it was an elaborate ceremony. Uh, sacrifices would be made, people, the musicians, the Levites were coming together, they were worshipping God. And in, in chapter 5 of Second Chronicles, chapter 5, verse 13 and 14, we read this. Indeed, it came to pass when the trumpeters and singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and the instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, For He is good, for His mercy endures forever, that the house, the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud so that the priest could not continue ministering because of the cloud for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. God responded to the people. How the people worship God, how they worship God with all their hearts, God responded and appeared to them. In the New Testament, we do not hear of huge corporate worship but we read of the time when the disciples were praying. And in Acts chapter 4, 31, we know that when when the disciples, when when, uh, Peter and John were released from the prison, right, they met with the disciples and they had a great prayer meeting. And they prayed with all their heart. They were looking to God. They were calling out, they were praising God. They were calling God to remembrance for all the things that God has done. And then in verse uh, 31 of chapter 4, Uh, Acts chapter 4, it says, And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. You know, God is sovereign. We cannot make Him appear because we do certain things. But when we begin to do this particular uh, uh, topic of transformational worship, I feel the important lesson is for us to capture the essence of what it means to worship God. He is worthy. He is God and He is worthy to be worshipped. 
and He would desire all of us to worship Him with all our heart. And when that happens, truly I believe that God will reveal Himself. Has that happened? Well, we hear of great revivals that have happened right in, in Pensacola, in the different places where God shows His power and we know that lives were impacted. Can that happen in Emmanuel? Well, the starting point must begin with all of us. Must begin with all of us when we come to a time of praise and worship. When we come and we worship God with all our hearts. You know, one of the things as I come to a close, a conclusion is this. You know, what? when we were doing the youth ministry, when we started, the, when Pastor Ang had asked us to see if we could do something to to help the youth ministry uh, have a revival. And one of the things we did was to bring in a praise and worship. And we felt that this was such an important component. We started CE classes. The, the youths, the youths we, uh, at 9 o'clock, they will come to church and we had CE classes. But we started a service and we wanted to say at the service, this is a place where God is going to be honoured and worshipped. And I remember, we, we thank God for Rachel Gunnar. Rachel was somebody that had a heart of worship. And I remember that Fridays when the, the worship team came together to do practices, it wasn't just about technical practice. Rachel got them to capture the heart of, of even walking with God, of knowing their place. It wasn't just about being good technically, but it was also being good knowing who God is. And so the early years we started, the, we thank God for the leaders, because we were very consistent at the, at the youth service itself. We taught the people what it is to love God with all our heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. You know, I, I, and you know young people got lots of energy. If they come to church and they're like, oh, don't feel like clapping, yeah, a good song, and they just stand there, something is wrong. Because when they are cheering for their school team, or they're cheering for their your favourite football team, they will go crazy. But why not for God? Why not for God who deserves all the praise? And this was the, really the foundation of what it is. Today we thank God for the young people of the church who have taught us how to worship God. That truly God ought to be worshipped with all our heart, our soul, our mind and our strength. You know, and, and, and I, I think this is so important. I, I, you know, this final song, I'm not going to sing, but this is a song that I love. I think many of you know this song. It's called, When God Walks Into The Room. Do we believe that? The lyrics goes like that. When you walk into the room, everything changes. Darkness starts to tremble at the light that you bring. And when you walk into the room, every heart starts burning and nothing matters more than just to sit here at your feet and worship you. We worship you, we love you, we'll never stop. We can't live without you, Jesus. We love you, we can't get enough. All this is for you. When you walk into the room, sickness starts to vanish. Every hopeless situation ceases to exist. And when you walk into the room, the dead begin to rise because there is resurrection life in all you do. Do we believe that? So I pray as we come to the concluding part of transformational worship, our week two, that all of us capture this essence of what it is to worship God. It's not about, really it's not about us, it's not about whether, you know, it's the kind of music, you know, it's the kind of, is it loud, is it soft, uh, do we have the full band? I mean, now with COVID, honestly, it's very difficult. We just have really a worship leader with a guitar. But can we still worship God with all our heart, our soul, our mind, our strength? I believe we can. Because it all begins with the heart. And we all go back again to why. I, I, want, to st I, want, I want to end off by saying, let's start by honouring God. And let's not treat the worship segment as a preliminary before the Word of God and we choose to come in at any time. But worship begins not at 11 a.m. Worship begins before the worship starts. It begins with us preparing our heart to give honour 
to the king. So today, we're going to end off, we're going to sing two more songs. And I pray that as you listen to the words of the song, as you sing along with the worship leader, every word that you sing, make that count. Because the songwriter pens that with the aim of helping us tune our hearts towards God. So I pray, let's do that together so that God will be honoured and the rest will leave God to show up. God bless you.
church let's just take a couple of seconds just to soak in his love god wants to speak to you this morning let's just lean into his voice just for a couple of seconds saturate us with your love Lord come and saturate us with your love that perfect love that casts out all fear that perfect love that casts out all fear fear of what has happened fear of what is going to happen fear of the future fear of the unknown let your perfect love cast out every fear And we just want to thank you for this morning where we can just seek your face, where we can just soak in your presence. And we thank you, Lord, that having received your love, having received your freedom, knowing that you are our champion, you champion us, Lord. We can't help but be encouraged. We can't help but be strengthened. We can't help but be transformed when we come face to face with a mighty God, with a holy God, and with a Father that never lets us down, that never leaves us. So even as we go from this place of worship, we carry your presence with us and we ask that you continue the good work that you have started, Lord. It's just a few weeks to the new year and Lord, we know, Lord, that you are with us and we have nothing to fear. You are our strength, you are our hope, you are our song. We give you all our praise, we give you all our glory and in your name we pray. Amen. Indeed, a mighty God, a holy God, a heavenly Father who loves us beyond and who never leaves nor forsakes us, a heavenly Father with whom we can confidently 
March into 2021 amidst uncertainties, but with whom we know we need not fear. So let's now turn our hearts to worshipping the Lord with our tithes and offerings. You know, if you want to give uh, electronically, what's going to flash across the screen now are QR codes. But if you wish to give um, by cash or by check, you may pop them in to our office during the work hours. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Father, today we are reminded, Lord, of the love you have towards us. We are reminded that we are your sons and your daughters. We are reminded, God, that through Jesus, we can approach you confidently and knowing that, God, your arms, your embrace is all uh, around us and your love is never ending. And for this, we are grateful. God, we continue to worship you with our tithes and offerings. We want to thank you for your provision upon our lives. You are Jehovah Jireh, a God who knows our needs even before we ask of them. So God, right now, we want to honour you. We give you a portion of the substance with which you have blessed us. And we ask for wisdom in the administration of your funds that many lives will be blessed and many will come to know and encounter Jesus as their Lord and their Saviour. In Jesus' name, we give thanks. You know, um, it, please do join us for our on-site services next week. Um, remember to book your tickets early. The ticketing system opens from Wednesday, 12 noon. Um, you know, our online services will continue to be on at 10 a.m. You know, we are a church and a, a family that believes in the power and the reality of prayer. You know, if we pray in accordance with God's will, we are confident to know that He hears us and He will answer our prayers. So, if you have a prayer need, a prayer request, please um, scan uh, this QR code and share with us your need. Your need will be kept confidential, but our team of pastors will pray alongside you. Do share with us uh, of any testimonies or any breakthroughs that come from our approaching God with our needs. Well, we've come to the end of the service. Do continue to keep in touch with us. You can keep up date with uh, the events and the things that are happening with our church on our Facebook, our Instagram, and our through our website. In the meantime, the Lord shine His face upon you. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord lift up His countenance on, on you. And the Lord grant you peace and be gracious unto you. Be blessed. We'll see you again 